And uh, so, Father, we just submit to Jesus this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I just want to just want to release this to you guys this morning. You know, why do we call it Intercessors Rally? Well, you rally around something. And today we're rallying around King Jesus. But I love, sometimes you rally because you've gone into battle and there's been defeat or dispersion. And we have to acknowledge that sometimes that's happened in, our, in, in, as in the body of Christ. There's been defeat and there's been a dispersion. But I like this part better. It says that, um, hold on, keep coming. A mass meeting of people making a political protest or showing support for a cause. Today, we, we're acting the kingdom of God, his politics, his government. And then right here, oh, hold on. Wait for it. Ibo sandara kaye. Ibo sandara nakandara fa moye. Ika sandara dada kamoye ha tasa. Ibo sandara kamoye tasike. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Uh, when we rally, we're bringing together forces again in order to continue fighting. And so I thank God that there is an again in us. I thank God that he, he is bringing us together. There's unified expectation. We are coming together in unity today to fight again. And the synonyms for that are to raise, to mobilize, to recruit, to enlist, to assemble, to gather, to muster, and to marshal. So I just want you to get that in your spirit today. And I ask the Holy Spirit to just reveal that to you, to take the cover off. And that today you're not rallying around what was. And you're not ra rallying around what is, but we're rallying around the one who is to come. And we're, we're joining forces. We're refusing to be dispersed. We're refusing to be um, just set apart. And so as we just enter into worship, we worship him. We usher him in, in Jesus' name. Come on, begin to wake up the voices this morning. Father God, a sound rises in this place once again this morning. We hear the call for you this morning. We hear the call from you, Lord. Even now, Father God, as soldiers in the mighty army of Christ, we say that we position ourselves right now. We lock in right now to the position of the Holy Spirit moving in our life, moving in our spirit, in our soul, our minds, our bodies. Lord God, we begin to pray over it even now and declare the works of the Lord even now.
this morning, before we sing into a, a song to the Lord, we're going to unite as intercessors in the sound of warfare. And I'm just going to release you now. I'm going to let you know that the sound is here. The drummers are going to begin to play over us. And I want to release you as intercessors in your own authority and in your own power to begin to release that in this house this morning as we unite with heaven this morning, Lord.
day when evil's done And for the day when Jezebel is gone For the day when sin is no more Let the earth praise the name of the
that he would break out over us, that he would break out through us. Is that, is that your prayer this morning? That he would stir your heart again? That he would, you see, last night was about setting yourself free. This, it was about, about personal. This morning we're going to turn outward, okay? So we have to settle that his spirit in me, through me, to me. We have to settle that if he sends me to release, he'll still take care of what's inside of me. Because we can't keep going back to a familiar place because we, we're concerned about lack or need. We have to move out to a place where it's settled. Where, where I can stand confidently in Christ, knowing that I'm, I'm grounded in humility, but I'm confident because of the cross. And it brings him glory when I'm confident. It brings him glory when I release. And his kingdom can come. It, will, it, it lands where there's faith. So this morning, our faith is saying, your kingdom come, your spirit be released because he's a man of his word, he's a God of his word, he's not a man that he should lie. So we just release ourselves this morning to his Holy Spirit producing holiness in us and through us. We thank God this morning that our hearts and our minds are clear. We bind distraction in Jesus' name. And we release the focus of the Lord, even as Jesus was intent on his mission. I just declare over you this morning, you'll be intent to hear your mission, to hear the mission of the church and say yes to being that stone, that lively stone knit together. And I just thank you, God, this morning that he's going to release in you an understanding. The picture is bigger. It's the world. The, his, his glory covers the earth. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness therein. And so the world is our assignment. So we're turning outward this morning. And even if you have to ride it somewhere to remind yourself that maybe something hits your spirit or yourself, but you're, I want you to adjust. It's not about you this morning. It's about the kingdom. It's about the king. And it's about seeing his kingdom established and you being an equipped warrior, okay? We're turning outward this morning. Outward. Outward. I want you to, your vision, you know, even if you have to turn, I'm looking outward and I'm looking up. 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 Our perspective changes today. Our perspective changes today. Your perspective will change your approach. Your vision affects how you risk take. Because if you don't see clearly, you won't risk take appropriately. You'll perceive it incorrectly. And poor perception will call something not when it really is. Okay? We've got to see it correctly. We've got to see him correctly. See, he's establishing in us. He, he's, he's been doing this work. He's establishing his character. We're persuaded in who he is. We're persuaded that he will come. We're persuaded that if we wait, he will speak. If we listen, if we hear, if we listen, he'll speak, we'll hear. He's gotten us to this point. We cannot negate the journey he has brought us on. And so he's brought us to this point because there's a, a, a next piece, a deeper place to go, a higher place to reach, and a, and a new perspective, a clearer perspective, so we can begin to enact and engage where he's sending us. An apostolic center sends. That's who we are. That's why we're here. And so as he is sending you, wherever that may be, you've got to engage where you are. You've got to activate him inside of you. And we're going to receive that instruction today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. If you're not ready, say, I want to be ready. Lord, help me become ready. Amen. 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 God, prepare us this morning. Prepare our hearts and our minds even more so. 
God, we humble ourselves before you. God, we want to go lower and that you would lift us up in due time. May we just, just go low this morning and receive from you so that when you cause us to rise up, we, we can just release and then we can go low again and hear and receive and then rise and release. Father, help us to learn that's the way of the cross. That's the way of a believer. We lift you up this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just as you head back to your seat, I just want just just stay focused as we enter into the word. You're going to... Um, worship team and thank God for a worshiping church. Um, I'm Pastor Stephanie Renabales. I'm uh, head of our intercessors and I'm our pastor of connections. My husband and I, Gerardo, we serve here and um, just want to thank him for all his help getting this together and all our intercessor ladies. You know, it takes a village. And I just want to honor Apostle Shirley and Pastor Steve Arnold, who are senior pastors, uh, founding pastors here, and Pastor Michael and Pastor Mel, who are executive pastors. And just honor our leadership because, you know, they have a heart to do the will of God. And uh, it's the beautiful thing when there's release and there's uh, just, just they just want God to be God. And it's a, it's a refrain place. And so um, this morning, we, we're just going to start off with Minister Letitia Stones. And I, I just, as she comes, I just want to, um, this is maybe, I know she preaches on Wednesday nights, but um, she, she has a heart for the kingdom. She has a heart for God's order. And um, we're going to go a little bit out of order this morning. Apostle's going to join us later on. Um, but I just want you to ask God that his spirit would help you understand, you know, because this is the kingdom and, and it's a different realm and we want to go higher. So I thank God this morning that we'd identify more with, uh, that he'd show us how to identify our identity, be clearer in the kingdom. That, that realm, that rule, that reign, that this morning, Father God, our, our natural identification with the language we speak and, and the, the principles that guide us, Father, I thank you that they, those would fall away in this, in this time and that the, the things of the kingdom would rise up within us and begin to bear witness which the things are about to be spoken. And I thank you for a solidification and an establishment. I thank you that there's a, a period at the end of sentences where there might be a question mark. I thank you this morning, Father God, that even as, um, as like, the, the, the wire frame is put into um, concrete. I thank you this morning that you are shoring us up and you're causing us to be firm and immovable and stable in all of our ways. And I thank you, Father, that we just, we receive the, this minister of the Lord. We receive Miss Letitia. We receive um, in the fullness of who she is. And we put a demand on the gift within her, Father God, to speak and to declare and um, to rightly divide the word of truth. And may it come and, and, and separate things between us and bring life to, to our spirit, man, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Y'all are wide open. Hallelujah. It's awesome. Awesome. And uh, it's just a privilege to be here uh, among fellow Epicans. And I, I tell you, it's been a journey for me to, to come to understand truly that this is, this is where I belong. And, and I heard somebody talking about a while ago about finding your faith tribe. And, I found it here. I, I didn't know it. I, I was running out the door when I came, but I thank God just for you guys loving me and, and receiving me and just for the opportunity to begin to just to become more of who God created me to be here at Epic. And um, my assignment was to, <clears throat> it says apostolic and prophetic intercession, but the Lord really just directed me and, and Pastor Steph, you know, released me to just deal with apostolic intercession just because of the season that we're, we're moving into. And you'll turn, if you'll turn to your notes there, we'll begin um, with the foundations, um, you know, as God has kind of directed me. And really, a lot of what, what, what I will share, um, the Lord is really going to be explaining what has already been happening. There may be a greater degree of understanding or depth of understanding, but he's going to give us a, a, just to help us to see and to be able to articulate what's already been happening here at Epic Church. And the first scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 from the King James Version, and it reads, Truly signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, 
in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this season and this rally that you have given to us. Thank you for directing us. Thank you for encouraging us. And we come into agreement, Father, that we do have the capacity to receive the revelation that you are releasing in this hour. We receive it with clarity. We will receive it with understanding and we will receive it with the ability to apply it to our daily walk so that your kingdom is established everywhere we go in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the foundations of apostolic intercession, again, from the King James, truly signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Um, the Passion Translation says the things that distinguish a true apostle were performed among you with great perseverance, supernatural signs, startling wonders and awesome miracles. And the voice says miracles, wonders and signs were all performed right before your eyes proving I am who I say, a true emissary of Jesus. And, and the, the focus in that scripture is the word wrought, um, and you can see the definition that I got from, from a little devotional that I have, and it says the word wrought is the Greek word katergazo, a compound of the words kata and ergos. The word kata is a preposition that carries the idea of something that is subjugating or dominating. The word ergos means work. When compounded together, it presents the idea of a work that is totally consuming or dominating, a work that takes every ounce of one's being. Again, talking about apostolic intercession. And in order to get a hold of that, we must first fully understand what the apostle does, who the apostle is, and what apostolic means. Apostle Shirley has already begun teaching us, and Pastor Michael they begun teaching us what that means and we're going to review some of that and go a little bit deeper in that and again so there's something that's all consuming so the work the miracles the signs and the wonders there was a there, there was no questioning what had been done there was no debating what had been done I believe somewhere in the book of Acts at one point they say well we can't we can't come against the fact that a notable miracle has been done see when those things begin to happen all mouths are stopped. People may want to rise up, but when the, the sick are healed, when the, when the deaf can hear, when the blind can see, when provision is made, when all of those things begin to happen, then there's no questioning. But there's a, there's a level of work, there's a level of intensity that goes in with that. And so a work that takes every ounce of one's being. I don't know if you've noticed the difference that's been happening in, in our worship. I I mean, and even in our intercession, we jokingly say it's aerobic intercession because we're getting a workout. It's, it's not a come in and sit back and, and don't know. It's, it's, and it's not activity for the sake of activity, but it's taking every ounce of our being. It's taking every ounce of our being to concentrate, first of all, to get rid of all the stuff that tries to attach to us, all the things that we've gone through during the week week. It takes every ounce of our being to do that and then to focus and to begin to hear what God is saying and yield ourselves and submit ourselves to the sound and the movement of God. So apostolic intercession, the definition of an apostle, one sent forth with orders and authorized to represent and act on behalf of the government of Jesus. Again, one commissioned and dispatched with authority and power and sent as a personal representative of a powerful figure or as the official representative of a government. So an apostle is one who is sent. An apostle is one who is sent not with, with no power, not with no responsibility, but with the full backing of whoever has sent them. So we have the full backing. The apostle has the full backing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit and the 
the word of God as we go forward and do the things that God has called us to do. And again, Apostle, when she taught about the characteristics of an apostolic church, one of the things she said is that the word apostolic is not in the Bible. But when you begin to look at the apostles, when you begin to look at their lifestyles, you can pull out characteristics. And that will, that's what we're doing so that we can fully understand apostolic intercession. Characteristics, functions, and duties of an apostle. Apostles are faithful, adaptable, learn to embrace suffering, have a heart for maturities. They are leaders among leaders, doctrinally sound, walk in signs and wonders. Functions and duties, apostles are gatherers. They impart and activate gifts. They bring order, bring correction, are master builders, bring revelation. Our parents, our foundation layers, our pioneers, our defenders of the faith, our warriors, our confrontational, our church planners, oversee and strengthen churches. They churches and ministries, they are burden carriers. They develop and train new leaders, ordain ministers, supervise and coordinate ministries, are able to manage crisis and network with other ministries. Understanding apostolic intercession, these are the foundations. So some of the duties and functions and characteristics of an apostle. The apostolic release, it identifies purpose, it restores, it builds, it breaks barriers and it rules. Distinctive features of apostolic ministry. And, and let me just say this. One of the reasons why the Lord has had me to begin to do notes is, is all, th there's no way that, that we can get in, in a setting like this everything. And so what he wants is, 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 is I'm, I pray that he will have me to speak what I need to speak. And then whatever is necessary that may be lacking, you will be able to go and he will be able to reveal it as you review. So, so if I skip over something, don't, don't worry about it. That's why, that's why you have this before you. So the distinctive features of apostolic ministry. Apostles think according to the written word. In terms of permanence, they think extensively, they think architecturally, Ap apostolic signs, they have character, grace to suffer, access to apostolic revelations, influence over people, cities, and demons, ability to mentor and reproduce. Again, the foundations of apostolic intercession are, are in the characteristics of the apostle. Apostolic ministry, once again, going into territory where the church is non-existent, dealing with aggressive and hostile governments, facing opposition of false religions opposed to one's very presence, pushing the evil forces of the demonic realm out of the way taking converts from the bleakness and blackness of paganism and turning them into living, breathing members of the body of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And then from Apostle Shirley, the characteristics of the apostolic church. They are risk takers based upon the word of God. Miracle workers, they have a spirit of generosity willing to fight and go to war for what is right. They have a pioneering spirit, new ground, new ideas on the cutting edge of the move of God, on the front lines of what God is doing. They are relationally motivated and establishes priorities based upon the word of God, not needs. So, so those are some of the characteristics and, and, and what the Lord desires for us to gather from that is there's a, there's a, there's a largeness and there's a bigness and there's a, there's a depth and there's a substance to the apostolic work. There's a substance and a, and a, and a, um, a large territory to the way that apostles and apostolic people think. That it's not, it's, it's never just surface because one of the characteristics is that apostles are concerned with, with, with permanence. 
They're concerned with maturity. They're concerned with growth and development. They're concerned with the foundation because when you lay the foundation correctly, then when you build, you don't have to worry about the storms that will come and tear down the work that you have been doing. And so one of the things that has been happening is God has been having us to, to and, and, and there's a desire to, to grow and to build and to see increase in the natural. But what God has been doing is he's saying, slow down, settle down, and let's lay the foundation correctly. It's not that the foundation isn't there. There may be some cracks that need to be repaired, but God is building it so that it is able to sustain the weight that is going to be released. See, the greater the found, I don't know, I know this by the spirit. I may have heard somebody say it, but the greater and the stronger the foundation, the bigger and the stronger and the more stable the structure is that you can build upon it. And so that when the storms come, again, when they come, when they come, the building, whatever has been built, whatever has been established is able to remain. And so God is, 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 is helping us to see that one of the reasons, even why some of the, the transition and the reordering that is taking place in our individual lives and in the life of Epic Church at large is because before the foundation of the world, there was a purpose in the heart of God for Epic Church. And there's a purpose and a reason why Epic Church is in the midst of a region that is so oppressive in the spirit. There is a reason why God is sending people, bringing people from, from out of state, from out of country to Epic Church because there is a work that needs to be done. And he is laying a foundation because there will be those that come that on their heart and in their mind is that if it doesn't work here, if it doesn't happen here, that's it for me. And so there must be a people who can see even the, the drug addict, even the prostitute, who can see beyond the external and can get the heart of God for the people that come and recognize that God has a purpose for them. God has lives for them to influence. God has places even for them to be sent into and to bring forth the establishment of his kingdom. So apostles and apostolic people and apostolic ministry deal with the big picture and that kind of slides into the difference between tactics and strategy. Now, I, I taught this a little bit in Bible study and somewhat in, in prayer when we had a little teaching, but basically tactics are the day-to-day -day things you do to get the job done. When I think about tactical prayer, Tactical prayer, and it's there in the note, it tends to be situational. It deals with the, the circumstances at hand. There's a problem, and we need to get it resolved. It tends to be operational. We're having this happening on this day. What do we need to do to make it happen? Who do we need to contact? What resources do we need to get together? But it's very one-dimensional. Strategy, on the other hand, is, is dealing with direction. It's dealing with movement. It's a bigger picture. Strategy is what should inform the tactics. When we understand the heart and the mindset of God, then that determines what we do. Pastor Michael on Thursday night, it was a beautiful thing that he said, is that we've sometimes gotten our assignment mixed up with our purpose. See, assignment is tactical. Purpose is strategic. Pastor Steph, as she prayed, as she exhorted, comes from a higher perspective. Our perspective is going to change, and it's moving from a tactical view 
to a strategic view. So strategic prayer, it gives guidance or leadership, direction toward a goal. It gives guidance in an effort, behavior, or thought, and it is concentrated in following or producing motion in a specific direction. So, so when you think about apostolic ministry and you think about apostles, that they're, they're very strategic. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to us what they're saying or what it is that we need to do. And, and if, we, if we shift, if we make the shift to a strategic perspective, we'll gain a greater understanding because big picture. They think extensively. They think architecturally. Think about what it takes to come up with plans to make a building. You, you can't just sit down and kind of oh, throw it together. No, there's, there's pieces that have to be put together. There's resources that are necessary in order for that thing to be brought to pass. And then the Lord had given me uh, several years ago on the next page uh, a diagram that kind of shows what I call the apostolic mindset and the apostolic perspective. You can see it's, it's strategic, and the arrows kind of show, if I were able to show it from an aerial view, it's omnidirectional, it's multidimensional. Apostles and apostolic people are concerned with the war. They're concerned with the big picture. Now, the battle is a part of it, but they're concerned with the overall resources that are necessary to engage and win. In our case, in, in to engage and to expand the kingdom of God. So then you can look further down and looks at directional prayer, strategic. It's directional prayer. See, it's delivering prayer. It's prayer that, that doesn't just get you, you know, a resource which is necessary. Don't hear me now. It's necessary, but we've got to move to a place where it's, there's a delivering prayer. So now I can walk in a place of victory day to day, and I don't have to come back for the same thing over and over again. So that's strategic versus the tactical which is very lit it's unidirectional is I can see this way I can see this way or I can see this way unidirectional linear concern with the battle it's situational it's operational it's provisional again they're necessary but God is 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 helping us to elevate our perspective so that we can flow more more efficiently and effectively in this new season now, on the next page, you will look at the present situation, the strategic, and just another way to see it. The tactical, it has been the focus. You attempting to direct and inform the strategic. It doesn't work. That looks, that's needs-based. I have a need. Let me get the need met, and everything's cool. But you see what happens is, so then when there's another need, then you go over, you get the need met over here, and everything's cool. But then over here, another need pops up over here, and you go and you get the need met here. And, and so you're constantly shifting back and forth to meet needs. But in the new way, in the things that God is doing, we got to get so that the strategic informs the tactical. When we get to a place where we get the heart and the mind of God and recognize that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, then we can begin to see things differently. Uh, Pastor Steph, again, in her exhortation, she said that if you don't perceive it correctly, you don't respond correctly. And so I cannot look at a situation from one direction and get the same insight as if I were seeing it from above. See, if I'm looking at it tactically, it may look like that this is the best way to go. But if there's stuff, I may not see what's behind, say, a barrier. It could be a booby trap there. Just think carrying on this military thing. If I'm looking right here, I may not see what's beyond that wall. And that looks like that's the best way because there's not as much resistance over there. So I go, I hit the wall, I get over the wall, and then there's a booby trap and I'm killed. 
But strategically, in the new way, I begin to raise my perspective, and then I can look. Okay, I see that there's a way to go here, but there's also a way to go here, and then there's a way to go if I were to zigzag between the chairs. And because my perspective is elevated, I'm able to see the booby trap, I'm able to see the, the, the enemy that is behind the chair there, and I'm able to see the enemy there, and I recognize, okay, this is the way to go. It'll also help me to detour if necessary, if things change as I begin to move in the direction that the Lord is leading. So right now, what God is doing is telling us that the strategic, it must inform and direct the tactical. The tactics, the things that we do day to day, corporately and individually need to be informed by the strategic view of God. Generally speaking, God is saying that our response as a people must be from a place of relationship and intimacy. We must respond as sons. We must respond as a church of which the gates of hell shall not prevail against. That needs to be our perspective, not constantly running here and, and here and here. And what will happen is some of the things that we're doing now will be cut off as our perspective changes. As God begins to shift us even the more into the new way, the strategic way. And then finally, the last um, little diagram um, you, you can see it uh, has apostolic voice and apostolic order and then the prophetic voice. They combine together over time and in place to provide movement, intentional movement, and purposeful movement. See, once again, so that resources aren't wasted. You know, when you're needs-based, you, again, you run over here, you run over here, you run over here, you run over here, you do this, and you sit down for, oh, I got to get up and go over here, I got to get over, but when you have the apostolic order and the apostolic voice combined with the prophetic voice, you gain greater insight and clarity and can begin to move intentionally in the direction that God purposed so that the kingdom can be expanded and the kingdom can be established in our spheres of influence. It deals with advancement and manifestation. So here's some questions. Not just what are we hearing, what does what we are hearing look like? How does what we hear play out? How does it manifest? What specific instruction, insight, correction, and etc., is being given to advance or expand the kingdom in our spheres of influence? So there's a coming together. It's no longer good enough, even in our in our in our in our prayer and our worship. That God has a God has an intended end. God has a purpose. God knows who is going to be present. God knows the level of breakthrough that is needed in order for us to go forward, to move into new territory. And so even in that, that we're, we're listening. We're listening in prayer. They're listening in worship to hear what it is that God is saying. And then as a result of that, what do I need to do? What do we need to do corporately to stay in alignment with the plans and the purposes of God? So then into the transition piece, the intercessor. This is from a book, Apostolic Shield. It says the intercessor is the mediator that takes a position in the gap or breach that has occurred between the intent of God and the person or situation. Once they are positioned, they meet with God to get his strategy and his release to turn and strike upon the one who has brought the instruction, the obstruction. So you stand in the gap. I love this definition between the intent of God and the person or situation so that the kingdom of God the intent of God is one way. 
and the situation is something contrary. And so the intercessor is the one who looks over here and sees the intent of God, looks over here and sees the person or the situation and makes themselves available to hear the heart of God and to begin to, begin to pray and to begin to pray and to bring the intent of God into the purpose or situation. So that's what an intercessor does. And so here's my little definition, because, of course, I, I, when I got the assignment, I, my first thing I prayed, of course, but I Googled to see if I could find a definition. And there, there's some stuff out there, but God said, no, don't, don't do that. Here's my definition. It is revelational prayer carried out by those sent with a mantle of rulership to take a position in the gap or breach between the intent of God and the personal situation to set kingdom standards, contend with powers of darkness, and alter the atmosphere in order to facilitate apostolic ministry. So we're sent with rulership, with authority, revelational. Pastor Stephanie last night said she saw the Lord just snatching, revealing who we really are, snatching the cover off. And so we're sent to stand in the gap between the intent of God, the original intent of God, and the personal situation. And then we bring kingdom standards, contend with powers of darkness, alter the atmosphere to facilitate apostolic ministry. So it's, it's, the, it's the nature of what we do. Apostolic intercession, the word apostolic describes the nature, but then it also describes the purpose and the function of the intercession. See, it's so that we have to be apostolic intercessors so that apostolic ministry can take place. What's that ministry? Miracles, signs, and wonders, building, uh, establishing, permanence, all the things that we talked about. We as a people must recognize that that's who and how God has called us to be so that we can establish the purposes of God. So our intercession must reflect the apostolic mandate by determining how and when and where we engage. So, so now, this, this part here, that's the, the transition piece. So we looked at the characteristics, the functions and duties of the apostle, and then we understand what an intercessor does and what an apostolic intercessor does and how they move. Now we're going to look at where we engage and how we engage. Part four is atmosphere. The spirit, a spirit seeking a voice creates spiritual influence. Spiritual influence creates atmosphere. Atmosphere sustained creates climate. Climate sustained creates strongholds. Strongholds sustained determine culture. Now, the spirit seeking a voice creates spiritual influence. That's, that's easy. Kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. God's original intent was for man to expand his kingdom throughout, throughout the earth. So, spirit, so that the spirit of God. And then we know, we know the story in the garden, how, how Satan came and the serpent came and deceived and then sin was released. And so that's the other force. That's a spiritual influence. So you have the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. So that's done. There's nothing we can do about that. That's, that, that is what it is. But now this spiritual influence creates an atmosphere. Again, atmosphere sustained creates climate Climate sustained creates strongholds. Strongholds sustained determine the culture. So if we think about the shift in perspective from tactical to strategic as an apostolic people, as apostolic intercession, what we recognize is, see, that the culture, what's happening in the culture is a result of the strongholds. The strongholds are a result of the climate. The climate is a result of the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is a result of the spiritual influence. 
So as apostolic intercessors, what we must begin to do is to elevate ourselves in our standing in the gap between the original intent of God and the person or the situation. We must elevate ourselves and we must begin to put our resources, to put our energy into the atmosphere. See, one of the questions I've asked the Lord is why is it that sometimes deliverance, and the only way that I could describe it is why doesn't deliverance take you know, it, it, how come it doesn't stick? How come it it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't really last? You know, it, I mean, and that's not just looking at other people. I'm talking about myself. You know, you'll come and 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 you know come to the altar and receive a word or receive prayer or or God will minister, Holy Spirit will minister right where we are, and um, but then you know I leave and you know a couple days, couple weeks, however long later, you know before you know it, ah, same same issue that I thought was dealt with. And God began, as, as I was studying, God began to say, it's, it's, it has to do with atmosphere. It has to do with atmosphere. And what we must recognize is that we, we as intercessors, that we must do the work to sustain and create the atmosphere of heaven. See, because see, in the midst of that, when the atmosphere is correct, it makes it easier for me to hear what it is that God is saying. When the atmosphere is, is clear or is in alignment with the atmosphere of heaven, it, it, it's easier for me to do the things that God says to do. It's easy for us to receive what it is that God says. And so we must deal with the atmosphere we've got to recognize personally corporately in in each individual ministry we must recognize that as an apostolic people as an apostolic intercessors it's the atmosphere that's our first place of engagement and from that strategic perspective of being in the atmosphere and understanding what's going on understanding what it is that God wants then he will give tactical instruction that will bring about the atmosphere of heaven. So we get the, the strategic mindset, we get the strategic perspective, and then God gives direction tactically. So he'll tell me, I need you to, I need you to do this. I need you to move this way. I need, you to, I need you to lift up your voice this, this loud. I need you to say this. I need you to play this on the keyboard or on the drum. I need, I need and, and it's all designed so that we can maintain or establish the atmosphere of heaven. An atmosphere is a general persuasive, and that just means it spreads throughout subtly or gradually feeling or mood. The prevailing tone or mood of a novel, a symphony, things artistic. It's a special mood or character associated with a place. And it is an aesthetic quality or effect, especially a distinctive one associated with a particular place. So what we must begin to recognize is that as apostolic intercessors, we've got to discern the atmosphere. See, that's what the Lord has been doing with us on, on Tuesday nights in intercessory prayer. And, and, and many of us, we would come initially and we were just ready to and, and, and hit it and, and get all revved up and go, go. And the Lord says, stop. What's happening? He just said, what, what, what's going on right now? What is it that, that the spirit, what is it that the, that the kingdom of God, what is it that God, what is it that he wants right now? What is it that's happening that you need to align yourselves with so that you can hear what it is that I want you to hear so that then you can respond the way that I want you to respond. And so he's been having us to set the atmosphere. And anybody who's been, we recognize initially it was taking us a long time to do that. It was taking a lot of energy, taking a lot of effort just to set, just to set the atmosphere. Because, because, because there was things we were bringing, even, even old ways of praying, 
old ways of engaging with God that had to be dealt with. But now what is happening is that it's not taking as much time and each one of us is learning how to submit ourselves to the atmosphere of heaven. See, I may have a personal passion and something that I'm very excited about and, and something that's really burning in my heart, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's in the atmosphere. It may not be the thing that the Lord wants to do. And so what we've learned to do is to submit ourselves to the atmosphere of heaven. And then we move and we engage and we sing and we pray and we declare and we decree and we march and we encourage and we minister individually as the atmosphere demands. And so as apostolic people, that's what God desires for us to do. So we must control we must come into alignment find out if we can't figure it out ask God God what's going on in the atmosphere right now and then how do I respond strategically what do you want me to bring how do you want me to move do you want me to pray do you want me to be loud do you want me to worship do you want me to march do you want me to get a flag do you want me to lift up my hands do you want me to encourage and then as the atmosphere is set then you go down to the diagram and then the atmosphere sustained creates climate climate sustains creates the strongholds strongholds sustained determine the culture and again the, the word sustained see sometimes I, I would I couldn't understand why some things had to go on long I mean maybe in worship or praise or pra it's like well, why why can't we just you know do it and then move on to it see it's got to be sustained that's what God is desiring so that it's there and this is, this is the people that we are. This is the way that we move so that any situation I go into, any situation you go into, any situation Epic Church that the Lord sends us into, we're going into it apostolically and we're understanding about atmospheres and we're understanding that we have a role to play in sustaining the atmosphere so that the climate can be created, so that strongholds can be be dealt with and so that the culture can be changed see it's almost like from the in, it's from top to bottom instead of inside out we can't change the culture on the culture's level you can't solve a problem at the same level that it was created so culture by the way the culture is what it is the spirit you know the spirit of the age and the, the prince of the air the prince of this world he's going to do what he's going to do and as a result we see what we're going to see we cannot have the impact and be the change agents if we look at it and so if I just get mad and I just get frustrated by everything that I see and I respond like that then I'm on the same level this is what strategy does it elevates us so that we can really begin to see you know and people talk about you being I'm a black person and so I talk to my dad often about issues in the black community and 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 he talks about well you need we need you know you need to have fathers in the home yes we do they need to get education yes they do they 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 need to they need to want to work yes they do but ultimately they need a heart change ultimately they need Je we all need Jesus Christ ultimately they need a relationship with a father who loves them unconditionally and has provision for everything that is necessary a heavenly father who made a way through Jesus Christ to deal with every hurt every abuse every dysfunction every issue every malfunction that's what we need and so when I look at it from the culture's perspective, then I'm coming up with all these plans and programs. But no, we need Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus will make our nation great again. No, there is no other. There is no other. God never intended for anything or anyone or any position or any institution to take his place. And an apostolic people recognize that. And we pray from that perspective. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added unto us. God reacts 
reality, God initiative, and God provision. He made a way through Jesus Christ for everything that is needful. And so as we come with that mindset, so then we come into the atmosphere and see then our prayers begin to change. We don't pray things that are going to bring division. Hey, we just, we elevate above all that stuff. We elevate, no black, no white, no male, no female, none of that stuff. No rich, no poor. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about being a child of God. And in the apostolic intercession, we pray. So when we stand in the gap, see, I'm standing in the gap. You're standing in the gap. Epic Church is standing in the gap and stewarding what is happening in this region and we're standing in it that way. We're standing in it knowing that Christ is the answer and that from that place, he will direct us. He will have us target our resources. He will have us target our resources at the place that will have the most impact in this region so that lives will be changed. This, that this whole oppressive spirit will just be demolished. It will be annihilated. By the power and the purposes of God. And so God needs us to be strong. He needs us to be fully engaged in what he is doing, even when we don't understand. He needs us to be submissive to those that are over us in authority because we are an apostolic people. So at every level, everything that we do is going to be apostolic. And it doesn't, it doesn't dis discount the other ministry. It's just this is the purpose for which Epic Church is here, an apostolic center. So everything will be characterized by that which is apostolic. So we must control the atmosphere, sustain it. And then what we did is um, in intercession, I think one of the first things that we did where God really began to bind us together and to help us to focus corporately was we began to look at these atmosphere goals. And there was an atmosphere of open heavens, unified expectation, supernatural surprises, everyone can receive, people are important, Victorious living is possible, reaching our city, financial blessing, communion, faith, vision, and worship. And God had, um, had me to write declarations, decrees, based upon these areas. And the four that are in bold are the four, four that he had us do. And if you look at the next few pages, that's what they are. That's what those are. Is, is, and so what we would do, as we were led by the Lord, we would begin to decree those things, and it would bring us on one accord. And then we begin to, to decree. God would add two. God would direct. At one point, we came out of the prayer room, and we began to, to march through the halls, and we began to decree based upon what we had said in the open heavens, whichever one that it was. And so it helped to bring a place of focus. It helped us to elevate and understand that we're interceding from, uh, from a place of victory. We're interceding from a place of, of, of provision. We're interceding from a place of joy and, and authority. And so this is just for you. You can, you can decree them if you'd like. The Lord is going to add more to, I believe, as we put some training materials together. But that's what, that's what it'll do. It'll, it sets the atmosphere. It sets, you, you've walked into a room. I know you have. And you can tell. You don't have to say anything. Nobody has to say anything to you. And you can tell, what? it's like, what's going on here? That's atmosphere. That, that's atmosphere. And so what we must do is recognize as sent ones with a mantle of rulership, we have the authority to go and to set the atmosphere. God, what needs to be released and how do you want to use me to set the atmosphere? And I love the last part of each one. Because of God's great grace, we have the capacity to receive all that he is releasing in this hour so that with boldness we may fulfill God's original intent to be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and exercise dominion. Hallelujah. We have, the, we have the capacity as an apostolic people to do that. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And the last piece, I, whoo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the last piece, um, several years ago, uh, Robert Slairdon, 
he was here. I think it was the first time I ever heard him teach and minister. And he said that he had asked the Lord what the next revival was going to look like. And, you know, he talked about the, 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 um, the dove and the lion and the eagle. And then he came back and, and then he taught a little bit more on it. And he said the Lord told him that uh, the next revival was going to look like an ox. And uh, he said, you know, when you go in a bookstore, you don't see books on ox oxen and all that kind of stuff. Nobody wants to be an ox. But because they're not, you know, they're not graceful and they're not, wee, you know, that, that's, no, an ox is an ox. Even, even the word ox sounds like, ah, who wants to be an ox, all right? Ah, oh, man, but, ah. Uh, Oh, Jesus, but now, ah, but God, but God. So anyway, that's, that's what he said. And, and so it, that, that just like, boom, it's just like, whoa. And then we've gotten several more words at different um, conferences here about the strength of the ox. And again, every time I heard it, I would be just like, ah. Boy, it just it would it would do something in my spirit, and uh, but I was like, hey, no, nobody taught me. I mean, was, is somebody gonna teach? And that this and that. Lord said, No, you do it. He said I put you you the one stirred up, and he said, Take it, and 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 it has to do with what's and and the reason we I didn't hear anything is because it wasn't the season for it, because all that has happened in Epic Church hadn't happened yet. And I couldn't make the connection. And now God says, now, now's the connection. So understanding we're an apostolic people, the nature, the characteristics of, of apostles, and, 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 and there's, there's just, a, there's a strength. There's an, a strength to apostles, and there's a, there's, there's a wisdom, and there's a, there's a stature, um, there's an ability there. And the characteristics, understanding, controlling, not controlling, setting, the atmosphere aligning with the atmosphere of heaven so that apostolic so the apostolic ministry can can take place that miracle signs and wonders the work of an apostle and of an apostolic people so we understand that in the strategic and the tactical so now God says in Proverbs 14 4 where no oxen are the grain crib is empty but much increase of crops comes by the strength of the ox when there are no oxen, the stall is clean. But when, but when there is a strong bull, there is abundant produce. Where there, are no, where there are no oxen, the crib is empty. But where there is much corn, there is the strength of the ox is manifest. There the strength of the ox is manifest. The message says no cattle, no crops. A good harvest requires a strong ox for the plow. Mm, mm, mm. And then Psalm 92.10, but my horn, my emblem of excessive strength and stately grace, you have exalted like that of a, of a wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil, but you've made me as strong as a wild ox. Ah, I'm soaked in precious ointment. Ah. What's ha mm -mm. What is happening in this season uh, is there is a release of a greater weight and glory, measure of the glory of God. That, that's, the only, that's the only way to describe it. And there must be a people who are strong enough, who can maneuver and move under the weight of glory that's being released. Be because there's the situations, nothing else will resolve the matter but the, the weight and the measure and the glory of God. So there must be a people who will stand in the gap between the original intent of God 
and the person or situation who will hear from God what his purposes and plans are to restore the person or situation back to the original intent, who will hear and then who will engage to align with or establish the atmosphere of heaven so that it can be sustained, so the climate can change, so the strongholds can change, so that the culture can be changed. And the people that will do it are the people who have the strength of the ox. The people who are willing to spend time and see it's done from a position of relationship. It's done from a position of intimacy with God that you can do, you can go into the situation and do what is required. But you've made me as strong as a wild ox. I am soaked. We are soaked in the precious ointment of the Holy Spirit because we are that people. We are that people with the anointing for the work of the expansion of the kingdom of God. We are the people who are soaked in the presence and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit who are not put off by darkness, who are not put off by perversion, who are not put off by poverty, who are not put off by dysfunction, who are not put off by stinky stuff, who are not put off by ugly stuff, who are not put off by messy stuff, who are not put off by anything that is against or contrary to the kingdom, who will stand in the gap and who will do the thing that is necessary to hear from God and steward the atmosphere so that apostolic ministry can take place. So that miracles and signs and wonders can take place. We are that people. The characteristics of the ox. We've already heard that God is calling us to a great level of maturity and when you look at the characteristics of the ox I know it is true ox our oxen are quiet unassuming animals listen to this that give back far more than they take they not not coming to just consume I'm gonna get mine and I'm gonna be happy and no 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 who give back far more than they take they work for long hours with comparatively small amount of feed and care. Oxen are not high maintenance. Ah. Ah. See, it's got to come a time. It's got to come a time. Where it's like, yeah, no, I can't, I can't, I can't go back 52 times to Pastor Steph with the same issue. And she done given me good counsel about what I need to do. And I've not done it. And then I just want to come and I want to suck the life out of her because I'm not willing. I'm not willing to get in line. I'm not willing to discipline myself. I'm not willing to be tenacious enough. I'm not willing to give up the time that is necessary to find the heart of God for my life. Ah, that's not the ox. That's, that's not the ox. That's not who we are. We're, that's, we're not that people. We're not, we're not high maintenance people. So oxen, they work long hours, again, with comparatively small amount of feed and care. Huh? They're easy to yoke together. They're easy to yoke together. So some of these, some of these issues, eh, just don't like the way she acts sometimes. I don't like the way she talked to me, the way he looked, and I didn't get and that didn't bad book that that no. <laughs> Easily yoked together. Hey, we got we got a work to do. That's see that see somebody said nothing else matters but the kingdom. My issues, my likes, my dislikes, my personal preferences. 
Well, I would rather do the work with him. No, the kingdom makes the requirements. Got to lay all that stuff aside so they're easy to yoke together. The oxen are beasts of burden. Uh, they, they, they're, 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 because of the, the weightiness, there, there has to be a willingness to, to work. There has to be a willingness to look crazy, if, if you want to call it that, when the kingdom requires it. There, there has to be a willingness to sweat and to expend energy for however long it takes for God's purposes to be fulfilled. That is the strength of the ox. That's why we are soaked in the precious ointment. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead quickens our mortal bodies and gives us strength to do whatever is required. Beast of burden, not, not false burden, but the burden of the Lord for the souls of men. So we are that people. Oxen are submissive to authority. Submissive to authority. Doesn't, doesn't matter how, doesn't matter, you know, younger, older, different race, different gender. Doesn't matter our relationship in the past. If they're over me in spiritual authority, I need to walk in a place of submission. I need to walk, see, the, the, the power, I need to willingly put myself under the authority of another. That's what submission is. Not grumbling and fussing, but willingly knowing that they watch out for my soul. Knowing that they hear God. Knowing that they have the best of in, in mind for me and for the kingdom to be established. So oxen are submissive to authority. They are easily driven. Don't, don't have to, you know, work them up and be, ah, no, they're easily driven. Easily driven. Somebody, I think it was Brother Lenny read a scripture about don't, don't fight against me. Don't fight against me when I'm leading you in a way that you've not been before. Don't fight against willing, submit to what I'm doing. And we know our Heavenly Father. He has plans for us, for hope and for a future. So we are the people, hallelujah. They respond to the word of command and the gold, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. And when there's a, there's a press, the gold is the thing to kind of stick in, to get them to go in a certain direction. In, in the spirit, the, the, the Lord will, will do that to us. He'll, I mean, he does it to me. He's like, come on, come on, don't, 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 don't disengage. Stay, stay, stay in there. And it's not, a, it's not a slap upside the head. Sometimes, sometimes I get that. But, but, I'm, but I'm learning to yield. And he just has to come on. And I say, okay, God, you, you, you telling me to do it? I know that there's a grace to do. I know that there's strength to do. I know that there's wisdom to do. They are easily, listen to this one, easily contented. Oxen are easily contented. Talking about maturity, talking about being an apostle. See, when you deal with all this stuff, it comes easier to hear God. I don't have to, I don't have to come and, and get what all my, all my stuff and I need this. and this. No, 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 I just, when I'm when I mature and I let God do, you know what? He's got that. We've seen it happen. We have seen it happen in prayer where someone came with an issue, and, but we, we didn't address the issue initially. We, did, all, we submitted to what the Holy Spirit was doing, and by the time we left, issue was taken care of. Ah! By the Spirit and power of God. So we're easily contented. Ability to do the same things over and over with the same strength. The ability to do the same thing over and over with the same strength. The ability to do the same thing over and over with the same strength. That's, the, that's an apostolic and prophetic people. That, that's who we are. And patient, finally, patient in difficulties. 
education. It's all kind of stuff going on. But ah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna trust. I'm gonna stay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna trust God. I'm gonna believe. I'm gonna believe God. I don't. I don't. It's it's hard. Hard for me personally, hard to go, man, day after day on that, on the job, and I don't see, and, mm, but I'm, I'm on, oh, God. Yeah, I can do this, God, with, with you. Yes, God, that's, that's, an, that's an assignment. See, I, that's an assignment. I'm not going to give up on the assignment because it becomes difficult. I'm not going to give up on the assignment because there's resistance. I'm not going to give up on the assignment because, because the enemy is coming against. He's coming against who God has called me to be. I'm not going to give up on the assignment. Epic Church won't give up on the assignment because there's those in the region that don't understand. Those in the region who are comparing and those in the region who, who for whatever reason, not, not, no, 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 patient. Patient, and then you begin to move into the fullness of God's purpose for our lives. And in the, the, the dictionary of biblical imagery, the ox, it's the pinnacle of created strength and ability. With the power and fertility, as a leader, their service, strength, and wealth, it captures the essential state of the created order, glorious capability, finite control, created to be well-treated, but yielded to another. Ah, oh, so there is a people. We are the people with the anointing of the ox to help usher in this revival. See, because the atmosphere, it takes that strength to sustain the atmosphere. The way that God, because it, we've seen it in prayer, we've seen it in service, where you see that the Lord is moving, and then it, can, it might be something that will happen, and everything in the camp of the enemy is trying to pull us away, to pull our focus away from the purpose of God. And so we must be that people, we are that people who are saturated, who are soaked with that precious ointment, who are strengthened by God from the inside out, who will be willing to do the same thing over and over again with the same strength so that the atmosphere is maintained so that God's purposes can be fulfilled. See, there are some, some, some issues that they, they need. The atmosphere has got to be maintained long enough for the Holy Spirit to do fully what it is that he's desiring to do. Not everything is that way, but we must be willing to, to stay in there. We must be willing to engage at a level with our entire being. And we got to dominate that, that word wrought where it's, everything's got to be subjugated to the work of the Holy Spirit that God is doing through us. And the strength of the ox is necessary to carry the weight of glory that is being released in this hour. The, the, the Bible talks about us growing up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And, and, and in the spirit, I just see there's a, there's a straightening of the back and there's a pulling back of the shoulders. And there's an ability with that weight to begin to walk. See, because I still got to be able to see. I still have to be able to hear what it is that God is doing. And then as he says, move, we move and we do what God says and we see the results that God promised. The strength of the ox. Stand to your feet with me, please. Apostolic intercession. Apostolic intercession. Begin to just engage with God from what you have heard. Begin to respond to the Lord based upon what you have heard concerning apostolic intercession. In this season, in this season, everything is going to demand a response. It's going to demand, it's a clarion call. It's a call that cannot be ignored. Everything will demand a response. Rito shete mando koshete si. Rito shata la mende si tarakata. O shanda la ramende si toloro shete. 
Rito shatalamende kete andala. Rito moshende andala kende. Rimando shete sito kolatara kando shete. Rimando shandala kende. Rito shandalamende kesanda. Remando shete kandala kete. Rito shandalamende. Rimando koshete. Rimando shanda. Thank you, God. We are saturated. We are soaked with fresh oil, God. We have, as it were, the strength of the ox. Remando koshata la kete. Rimando shete anda la ke. Romondo sharamando sete anda. Rimando koshanda la kete. Kamondo shete landa la kete. Rima koshende. Rimando koshanda la kende. Rimando koshanda. We respond in the strength that you have given us, God. We respond in strength. We respond in boldness. We respond in confidence, oh God. We respond in strength. We respond in boldness. We respond in confidence, oh God. Rimando shandala ketete. Rimoto shatala mende kisatala. Shito kosatala. Remondosha, easily directed by you, God. Rito shete mandolo kondaramente. Rito shata ketete. Rimondo shete la kanda. Ribota shata la monda ketea. Rimoto shete ki anda la kotara. Remondo koshanda la kotete. Rimondo koshata la kete, rimando koshende. Yeah, come on, come on. Rimando shende. In the realm of the spirit, we see ourselves full in stature, digging in our heels, as it were, Father God. Remondo koshanda la ka. To relinquish nothing, O oh God. To relinquish not a promise, O oh God. To relinquish no territory, God. To relinquish nothing, God. Ricando shata mando sete. Rito shete manda la kete. Rimando kosha. To not relinquish our voice, God. Not to relinquish our movement, God. Rimando koshata. We have, as it were, the strength of the ox. You have anointed our heads with fresh oil, God. Fresh oil, God. Fresh oil, God. Fresh oil, God. Oil that soothes and oil that strengthens. Oil that heals. Oil that revives. We have, as it were, the strength of the ox. Remando shete anala kende. Remando koshata sete atala. Remando koshete sitalaka. Rito shanda la kende mondo kotara. Our tongues are going to begin to change. Our tongues are going to begin to change. Our heavenly language, our intercession is going to take on a new tone. It's going to take on a new strength, take on a new wisdom. Going to carry with it a greater level of authority, a greater level of boldness, a greater level of yieldedness. Sando sharamoto sete. Rimando shataka. Sita la koshetete. I decree the spirit of the second wind, the spirit of the second wind, the spirit of the second wind, the spirit of the second wind. Rimando shata sandeleanda, reta shara la razón de mata kete, reto shata moko telanda, riando koshiri ando konda la 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 botata. Rimando shandala la la mente, sindo koshata bekete, sori anda shende mandala la kitata. Rimando kosha, we are awake to your call, oh God. We are awake to your call, oh God. 
clarion call, clarion call. Remando shararara se te te. Remando shararara se te a. We hear the trumpet, God. We hear the trumpet blowing, God. Oh, da 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 manda se te a da. Rito she. Remando shararara se te. Remando sanda. Sende ta 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 la mende. We're not put off by doing the same thing over and over again. As we're led by you, God, we do it in your strength, oh God. We do it in your strength, oh God. For the glory of your kingdom, God. For the glory of your kingdom, God. Ando shanta la mente atata. Remando sandete. Sonde. Against your church, oh God. Against the people yielded to you, God. Against the people submitted to you, God. Against the people filled by your spirit, God. Remando kosha ta ta press. Yando kosha ta 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 press. Yando kosha ta 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 press. Remo kosha ta 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 press.
stage. This is atmosphere. We're just practicing keeping that atmosphere sustained. going to be watching it. Are you going to be watching it so that? We can't watch it. Oh. Testing, testing, one, two, three. We can see you and hear you. Hello, everybody. Hi. This is, um, this is a, a little um, uncomfortable for me because I can't see you. And uh, even though I'm live, um, you're not live to me right now, uh, other than in the spirit and I've been following, and so I've been there, and I, I uh, am in the spirit with you all, and just want to, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot left for me to say. Um, what a remarkable message we just heard, and I have to say that between Pastor Steph and now Letitia, I think this is world-class teaching on apostolic intercession. It's better than I could do, uh, and I'm glad. I think uh, I just want to say that this is what uh, apostolic center produces, are the, the, these gifts and this anointing so that it is developed to help other churches, to help other regions. And uh, out of this, is this, this is the seed, and out of it is, uh, is coming uh, the local handbook for the, a church that wants to shift to apostolic intercession and an understanding. Uh, it was remarkable. And I think that we as a people must continue to remember that what we experience is extraordinary. If we don't recognize that, we will take for granted what the Lord does in our midst. And, and we'll measure things based on size, numbers, and money. And that is not the way the kingdom is measured. So 
I just want you to understand, those of you who are there, and, and forgive me for not being there this morning. You know if I could be, I would be. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make sure that we as a people understand that we are in the flow of this moment where divine alignment is producing divine agreement, and that divine agreement is producing anything and everything that God has uh, purposed to accomplish in our midst. That is the blessing of divine alignment. That's the most important part of recognizing and coming in to who we are as a, an apostolic center is that the shifting and trust me sometimes it's like a tug of war and sometimes you have to really fight to get to the shift there's no question about it you're hanging on with all you've got then the moment comes when all of a sudden the rope lets go on the other side and you finally pulled the other side over that's a lot of what a shift is like and that's a lot of what we've done and uh, intercession plays a tremendous role in that tug of war and I think we heard today and last night about the strategy the what all of that means I, I it was beautifully done now what do I have to add to it because you really only need me to add what's necessary um, and that's all I want to do is just I want to add the part that's necessary the one word that the Lord spoke to me was the word postured um, and so of course um, like Letitia said you know we Google and so I uh, I looked at the dictionary um, just the term and began to understand the difference because posture is a word that can be used as a noun or as a verb uh, and I realized that we are used to living in the noun of the word posture when God is calling us to live in the verb of the word posture. The, the noun is simply this. It is a description of a perceived position. So if I look at someone and say, you know, you've got good posture, I'm perceiving who they are or the way they stand and say in the physical realm you've got good posture if their their shoulders are rounded if they're you know kind of hum, hunched over or whatever I'll say that's bad posture that's the noun we are used to continually discerning by what we can see and calling that posturing or the, and if we stay in the noun of the word, then we're always just reflective of atmospheres. We're always reflecting what we see instead of the verb, which is now to be what we want to see. So my portion in this process or this, in this word is to talk about this uh, postured, being postured, and if you have your notes there, you'll see I also added prepared and powerfully preeminent because it is in the setting of our posture that we begin to see the full preparation of God in the atmosphere of our church, our region, our own lives, and the world, but it also releases us to be powerfully preeminent. And that means the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I know you're clapping right now, even if I can't hear you. We want to stand and be making progress in establishing this kingdom. And that has to do with being postured, the verb. So the number one, in your notes you'll see it, number one definition of posturing is to place in a particular posture or attitude. In other words, it takes an action, and I would say it this way, there is an intentional decision in a process towards posturing. You, we have to 
if our posture is bad, we have to straighten our shoulders. There has to be a corresponding action in posturing. It can't be just the idea. It can't be just the revelation. It has to be the revelation now being put into action. So we have to intentionally posture. That means, you know what that's like. It's like sitting in a chair for a while and realizing you've begun to slump down and your back's hurting and I need to straighten myself up in my chair because I need to change my posture. You have to do something. You can't just think, you know, if I, would straight, if I were sitting straighter in this chair, I would feel better. <laughs> you can think that all day long. Until you straighten yourself in the chair, you're still going to have the same result. If I were looking at it with a picture in mind, it's like this. It's like, um, where are we going to drop our anchor? We, we can be uh, in the flow and in the process in, our, uh, in the boat of life, uh, even in our intercession, even in our revelation. And we can be in the, as, as part of that flow and in the boat. But posturing is dropping our anchor somewhere to say this is the position this is the place and now I'm going to drop my anchor in this place that's what you do in intercession you you drop your anchor in a place of intercession that's not just flowing around in in a beautiful atmosphere but you say you know what this is the place drawing the line this is it I'm postured in this place that's what I believe this weekend was about is as well as what has been happening throughout um, the, uh, the the last I think full year of training and intercession has been has been this very concept is beginning to understand as an apostolic center, where do we drop our anchors in intercession so that we know where we are postured? And I think that God is bringing definition to that. Secondly, it uh, says that uh, the, the uh, definition is to position, and I have lost, um, am, I, am I still on, guys? Uh, I need some help here. Anyway. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, it secondly is to position, but that has to be strategic position. And the way it's described is that you begin to, it's like this. The picture is posturing by putting your troops along a border. It's, it's determining this far and no more, let's say, to the enemy's approach or to the, or, or to the, the dividing line between uh, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the enemy and beginning to posture our troops, our strength in that place that we would consider non-negotiable. You can't come any further. That is part of the posturing process. Where is that? Where is the place that we drop the anchor? Where is the place that we draw the line? And then where do we set up our uh, our strongholds or or what we want to what we call the troops? Where do we bring the troops to? I love the statement that was made this morning that had to do with we we have to intercede to elevate above the warfare. Now Paul said that very clearly when he said a good soldier is never entangled with the affairs of this life. But that that is becomes more true than anything that we have to be people as soldiers. We have to hear this and in the posturing we have to we have to understand that we're going to have to sometimes be the threatening force in a place that keeps um, along the line of demarcation that keeps saying you this property is not yours you cannot come you cannot come any further and be the ones who take the sniper fire at that point because the idea is take them out so we can encroach so we want to be people who are covered and we are covered through our agreement and we understand by the shield of faith that shields us all the beautiful picture that 
we've actually demonstrated before where if we link our arms and all draw up our shields, there is no place for the uh, arrows of the enemy to uh, penetrate. So posturing has to do with that strategic position. Number three, to develop a policy or stance. Now, this is really important because we have to develop strategy and then we have to, it's, it's like this, we have to, if, if you were in warfare, your, your generals might not be out on the front lines, but if they don't develop the policy or the stance, then we don't know where we're standing, why we're standing, or what we're standing for. And, and it is essential that we continue, and in an apostolic setting, that definition continues to evolve, increase, and, uh, and literally begin to elevate. Uh, because where we are today is not where we are tomorrow because apostolic intercession and apostolic mission presses forward to increase territory. So we'll never be good with simply... Uh, a line of demarcation and now it's our area or whatever we're defending this it's our foreign no more idea this is our place and and the devil's not going to come in for us that's not enough we have to first of all set up strategically what that means that we no longer lose territory but we always do that looking forward to moving the line of demarcation so that the kingdoms of this world are now becoming the kingdoms of our God. So that's who we are. And we have to understand that developing this policy or stance means I'm in an offensive position. I'm not simply defending. I am defending with an eye on the next territory, the next victory, the next thing. And an apostolic uh, center and, and apostolic thinking, philosophy, revelation, understanding, uh, uh, enough is never enough. Just enough is never enough. And for us, it will always be the greater. We'll always move for the greater, the more, the fullness. Number four. And the last in this definition is to adopt an attitude or take an official position on a matter. I have been told this many times by leaders and other people in intercession that to declare war is dangerous, that we should be careful, that we should not declare war. Because when you declare war, you increase your warfare. Um, <clears throat> I have a problem with that philosophy because the enemy has already declared war. I, I think our problem is we're afraid. We've been intimidated by the show of strength that the enemy has brought into our lives personally and corporately. And so somehow... We think if we don't engage the enemy in the hand-to-hand -hand combat, that somehow we will have less casualties. Um, I think that is absolutely the opposite of everything that the Bible teaches and that Jesus stood for. I don't think you're supposed to consider that. I don't think that's a consideration. Do, are there sometimes casualties? Yes. But I don't think that's what you make your decisions based on. And I don't think that is the way you strategize. I don't think you're supposed to strategize based on how safe you can keep people or how safe you can keep your atmosphere. I wish our atmosphere was always safe. I wish we were always free from attack. And I wish that we never bore any kind of um, scars because sometimes those scars are deep. Sometimes we give our all and, and it hurts in the warfare. But the reality for us is that anything less 
could never be authentically and truthfully what it means to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. We have whitewashed it to such a degree that we're calling for people to sign up in an army that has no power. We're sending people into battle without weapons because we don't want to scare them. And I don't know, I think we have to be real. And the reality is, it's already a war. We're already in the midst of it. Terrorism, <laughs> the terrorist attacks have been on for a long time in the spiritual realm. And we're trying to figure out ourselves how to avoid the discussion of the real war that we're in and not scare people. But I think that what's happened instead of trying to keep people safe is that we've made people ineffective and impotent. And they don't know how to fight when the time comes. So the intercessors, the professional soldiers, have to now do all the fighting, or the leaders have to do all the fighting because the people no longer know how to be a soldier in the army of the Lord, don't know how to outfit themselves in the armor of God, no longer know how to stand up in daily life to the onslaught of the enemy. They can't tell the difference because we have kept the warfare to the few who can handle it. So I'm here to say, let's take the cover off of it now. We're in war. We are declaring war. We Sometimes there will be casualties in that war, but we have casualties no matter what. Look around you. Look around us. There are people who have casualties because they didn't know how to fight. So I don't want that on my conscience, and I don't want that in, on my account. I'd rather teach you how to stand up and fight, and if you have to fight hand to hand, and if it gets hard, and I don't know, whatever it takes, then I want you to fight. It's the way I feel. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna fight. And you know what, if the fight comes to the death, then so be it, but I fight. Don't lay down. I don't try to get out of it because I. it's impossible. You're going to fight until the enemy either wins or you win. That's the way it goes. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So you have to adopt an attitude. You have to take an official position. That's what postured is in the, as a verb. It's action. It is making not only that intentional decision to move forward, but it is standing in that place and not running and not quitting because it got too hard and not getting discouraged because some people dropped out. And even if it's the one next to you that should be holding your arms, the one next to you that you should be connected to who left, then you just scoot as fast as you can to the one next to them until you've got that, that breach covered. The way it goes, this is really the truth. And if it's the truth, then let's live by the truth. Let's live truly, deal truly, and understand what we face. Let us posture ourselves now. Let us intentionally move ourselves forward and move ourselves into place. Let us straighten our shoulders. Let us, let us uh, gain a backbone. Let us be courageous in the face of what seems to be impossible odds at times. But let us see that every prayer counts. Let us see that every demonstration means something in the atmosphere. Let us see that, that even Gideon's army was enough as long as, as they fought with the power of God on their side, with God in agreement with them. Let us see that size really doesn't matter, but heart, commitment, positioning, posturing does. Let us see, let us hold on now to the fact that prayer is not a one-time event on a Tuesday night, but has now become a position, a, a place of posturing that we as a body are now beginning to stand up. Let us be the seed. Let us uh, allow God to use us as the seed in this apostolic vision of God to raise up apostolic intercessors and apostolic people who will come into agreement and begin to bring strength to that front line. Let us be un 
afraid, or at least let us not be intimidated to the degree of mm, paralyzing us. Let's cast it off. I've heard you, what you've been singing up there, and I've heard what the song of the Lord has been. Now, guess what? You can sing it till the cows come home. <laughs> And it can be full of power, but it's costing you something to receive it. Not just to sing it and not just to be a part of it, but to receive the word of the Lord. Wake up, body. Keep pressing. I heard it, and so did you. And you sang it, and you were a part of it. Now, let's posture. Let's take what we have heard, what we have sung, and now let's posture ourselves and be those who no longer just enjoy the atmosphere and sit in the boat, but drop an anchor right here. God bless you. I love you all. I'm sure there'll be a transition here, and I want us to transition. And, and, uh, and for me right now, if I were there, this would come as a place of commitment. However, leadership feels that it needs to go at this point. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for believing and agreeing with me and knowing, yeah, I'm in a battle, but you know what? We're going to win, and I'm winning, and we all are going to win through the battle I'm in. And, and it's going to, you know, the devil wants to stop the voice, but he's not going to. And he's not going to stop your voice either. So the time has come for you to shake off the last season and everything that made you get... Um, settled into a position when God's ready to reposture you. Go ahead. Let's do it. I love you all. Thank you. right where you are. I don't know what God um, spoke to you when Letitia was having us engage and just with those words about posturing um, it's on time and it's right on target and we do have to commit and um, we have to commit to be the new wineskin which means we've got to relinquish the old and sometimes that sounds I don't know, the Lord was just talking to me about that. Like, I didn't think that there was the grief or the disappointment or just what it, the hurt or just whatever, but there's a, there is an exchange. There is a transition. There is a change. And, um, and we have to posture ourselves to receive the new wineskin and to be the new wineskin. And so just wherever you are, just make an altar. And it's your commitment before the Lord.
I'm going to leave the sanctuary open so you can continue to um, just, if you want to just rest and just let him continue to speak to you. Beautiful thing about the Lord is when he calls and he gives you a word, his word will keep you. So the yes to him will keep you in the midst of betrayal or casualties or warfare or disappointment. A man asks, when men ask us to do things, it's a little bit different. So just, you know, your yes is to him. Yeah, commander in chief. So as he calls, just continue to release your yes. Um, we're going to be preparing lunch. Um, so in about 10 minutes, you can meet us over in Legacy.